So here's something interesting. Um, I've been working for the past couple of days on this uh, feature called working hours or work schedule. Uh, this thing allows uh, people who are posting jobs to specify the working hours and the time zone if, uh, if anything like that is required. So I'm going to just, if you hit publish a job, for example, from your uh, Wii Remote uh, company account, you have here working hours and time zone that you can specify. Um, so I'm going to just uh, use the edit uh, functionality so I'm just gonna refresh this page because I want to take you to something so <clears throat> over here if I click edit I'm going to go into edit mode and over here I have my working hours in my time zone and it's like a 9 to 5 um, that's also visible over here so it's uh, let's take another stab at time zones yeah so let's call this time zones demo job. Hope it works. Save the edits and go back into edit mode. We're going to see that this changed. Right. So see schedule 917 time zone EEST Eastern European summertime UTC plus three. So uh, over here we can go 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And uh, we could go Eastern European time, for example, and uh, see this uh, functionality where, like, if you start typing, uh, for example, you have a list of options that gets narrower and narrower. Or if you hit the down arrow, you get the full list and you just go all the way up and down. It's, uh, it's alphabetical. So uh, this is the feature I implemented. And the way I implemented it is fairly simple. I just put a, an input. In this case, it's a, it's a text field. So uh, over here, it's a forming text field on the new listing form and the create listing form. But um, for this functionality, because I want uh, people to be able to like click over here and get all the jobs in the Eastern European summertime uh, time zone or Eastern European time right now, UTC plus two, I had to create a couple of pages. And I wanted first to create a page like uh, that goes like slash remote dash jobs slash uh, time zone or uh, the, where the time zone is like uh, ACST, ACT, whatever. Uh, but then I said, why don't I create like an index page for all the time zones, like on remote jobs time zones, and you can do the same thing over here, search for this or browse all of them and I don't know, click on one. And as you can see, and over here in the bottom left corner, the URL changes, it points to localhost 8888 because that's where I have, I should have the static site running and I am proxying these pages through to the static side with a 200 OK status so that the URL doesn't change. And that's for SEO reasons. If you want to hear me talk about that, I'd love to let me know in the comments wherever you're seeing this. Uh, but um, I, I, I decided to set up this index page and then uh, uh, set up a separate page where you would go remote job slash time zone slash the actual time zone where I would list uh, the jobs in the time zone. And so this drop down when I when I uh, it's not a drop down it's just an input that filters over a list. Uh, as you can see, it has a pretty uh, neat implementation and it's pretty standard. I have just an input type text. Input type text takes a list uh, and a list property, uh, what's it called attribute, and its value is the ID of a data list. And whenever you do this, whatever you type in the input filters over the data list options. And uh, you can use the keyboard or the mouse to select any one option. And uh, this is some React contraption. Uh, you would usually use the on input event to uh, get into the value of the input that gets um, populated by selecting an element from this data list. Uh, and uh, as a side note, the on change event uh, of React, this is a React event, 
uh, actually delegates to the on input event, like the native uh, event of the HTML input. So <clears throat> I wanted one of the first things I wanted to do was to customize this. So as you can see, it's not that pretty, right? So I started Googling and of course I ended up on Stack Overflow. And there's this question, is there a way to apply a CSS style on HTML5 data list options? And I wanted to make them prettier. And of course, because I thought there weren't gonna to be too many options because it's just like selects and that's right. Like someone said it, like select elements, the data list is has very little, very little flexibility. So you either build some custom things and you hide the native event, the native elements, and uh, you rely on the event handlers. You register behind the scenes on native uh, elements and uh, manipulate the UI with like divs and create divs and whatever, which is ugly. Don't do it. Or uh, you start using some browser-specific prefixes and hook into the uh, browser implementation of, uh, of these elements and uh, do some really nasty browser specific hacks, which you don't want to do. And so um, I said, okay, I'm not going to style it. It's not that ugly. But then I just scroll just out of curiosity. And of course, there is always that one fucking person who can go, you can create an alternative data list with jQuery and they start pasting all this crap, which I hope they wrote just once and now they're pasting it. I hope they didn't spend time writing this or uh, adapting, even adapting this from someplace else, um, just to earn some points on Stack Overflow. So imagine you wanted to do this fucking thing, which is just, I want to type EET and go Eastern European time, right? Um, and uh, I have to, I go to on Stack Overflow, someone says, okay, this is hard to style and I'm not that experienced. And then someone says, you can create it by jQuery. And I totally disregard this minus two over here and uh, the fact that uh, uh, someone is uh, literally teaching me how to create a, a totally separate version of this um, in, in, in some library that's, well, pretty, still pretty popular in terms of like usage, but like hardly an industry standard right now. And all in all, adding over, if I eyeball this, it's, I think it's, 200 lines of code over here. Uh, but if we like eliminate the, the HTML, I think we have actually 300 lines. I think we have about 200 lines of code over here. Uh, just uh, the, the JavaScript and, uh, and the CSS. So I have to maintain 200 more lines of code just to get to this fucking thing. What the hell is wrong with the native one then? So, uh, yeah, I made this video just to show you how sometimes you just might want to keep this damn thing simple and rely on the web platform and give up that papaya whip, uh, baby pink background that you wanted to apply to the options list and uh, the ripple you wanted to, to happen when you, when you clicked on a, on a specific option. So, yeah, this is this is literally all there is to it. This is the whole implementation. Like I'm, just, I'm copying it and pasting it in a, in a separate tab here. It's just an input with a placeholder. The whole, all the magic happens with this list attribute, which is, which has the value set to the ID of this data list. And of course, these time zones are coming from a JSON uh, object file over here, which I manually scraped using the CLI from Wikipedia. Um, yeah, and uh, it's fun to rely on the web platform. And uh, this is a neat, tra neat trick I taught this code how to do, which is that whenever uh, the, the input changes, uh, I am getting the input type, and of course I have to get it from the native event because React has a synthetic event. It's not uh, the, the event that you get from the DOM itself. And so whenever, uh, for example, if I open the console over here and I'm gonna 
clean it up. Uh, I still have the console logo, console log over here. So whenever I type a time zone, see, this is the event is insert text and it has two occurrences. I type T three occurrences. Then if I delete, it's delete content backward. This is the input type thing. So whenever you Autocomplete, like you choose an option. Uh, I'm going to just delete them all and just type A. Whenever you click on this, the event is insert replacement text. And that is not in all browsers, I believe. I don't know if it's old, if it's older, if it's Internet Explorer, or if also, I don't know if Safari does this, where the input type uh, is null. Let me actually switch to one file. So um, if we're going back to where am I? I lost I lost my file. I lost my uh, time zones index TSX. So the input type of, uh, of the event uh, is insert replacement text whenever you you select one of these options. I'm going to go back to the page. Uh, disregard this. I'm going to fix it. So if I do EE and then I just navigate over here, see it's insert text and all of a sudden it's GMT over here. If I'm going to cl click on it or hit enter, it's going to go insert replacement text. And as you can see, I already navigated to slash time zone slash GMT. This change from slash time zones to whatever. If I click on this ACST, yeah, of course it's 888 because I haven't started the static website. Uh, but, um, Whenever, whenever I uh, I do this, I get navigated. Uh, whenever I select an option, I get navigated. I get taken to the actual um, time zone page over here that lists remote jobs that are in that uh, time zone. And this is going to be a link to the same page. Um, yeah, and that's how I made this magic work by using this router uh, from Next, which I don't even think I need, actually. I think I can do away very easily with uh, with window location. And I think I'm actually going to use this because this page is not going to be served through app.wiremote.eu, although it can be accessed over there. Uh, it's going to be served through WeRemote.eu. I literally have some redirect set up over there. So whenever uh, pages like slash remote jobs are accessed on WeRemote.eu, I make a proxy request with this redirect to the app and I serve that page. And this is how I can integrate highly dynamic pages that are backed by server-side rendering into a static website. But again, if you're seeing this, if you're watching this and you're interested, do let me know because I'd love to talk about some of the tech stuff uh, that uh, are sitting sit behind in in the bowels of of the system because it's it's quite interesting in, in in a couple of ways. Yeah, so a lot of talking on uh, data list and an input, but I hope that you got a glimpse of like real web development. And I'm not saying this in the sense of uh, you know that I do real web development. Like I don't, I NPM install a lot of shit just like you, um, and I hate it. But uh, this is, these are things that the web platform can do. And uh, as long as you're willing to make some trade-offs, like the ones that I made with a little bit of styling, then I, I believe uh, you're in for, uh, for a win because you saw it. Like it's, it's just like, magic you just type and it works and it's no react magic nothing besides the uh, rendering and besides the fact that this is a whole react app but if you look at it like i could have removed this on change event altogether and uh bind it outside using add event listener and it would have worked and it would have been great and uh i could have used a template the html5 template element and template this thing over here. So yeah, the web platform can do this and it's beneficial for all of us to learn uh, about the tricks the web platform can 
and uh, can do and the things that the web platform can do for us. This is it. Uh, I kind of rambled a little bit, but I really, really hope this is useful and interesting for you. Do let me know. I'd love to share. Just give me some ideas because I have a lot of things and uh, people asking me for stuff. It just helps me helps me focus and uh, and deliver that. That's it. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.